everybody. Welcome to um, another session with me. So today what I want to do is primarily focus on the basics of neurographic art, the way that I practice it, the combination of some of the principles out of neurographica and um, also the way that um, I essentially use this form of art for my therapy and manifestation practices altogether. Okay, so I come to this kind of work from, I was introduced to it through Neurographica, and there are certain principles out of that that I continue to use, and there are certain principles that I have added to it myself. So, for me, this blank page is the field of all probabilities and possibilities. In Gnostic belief and the story of Aeon Sophia, they call this space the Pleroma. So on this page, everything and anything is possible. So as I depict whatever composition I'm putting on here, I am making something possible that I am telling the universe. It is my personal expression. And then the second part of uh, the theory that I kind of borrow from uh, Neurographica is this idea of three levels of consciousness, which isn't just unique to Neurographica, but you find this throughout psychology kind of all over the place. Uh, it goes back to uh, Jungian um, psychology where they talk about a personal consciousness, a societal consciousness, and then a universal consciousness. Okay? I, I think Jung calls that the um, universal subconscious. So we kind of have the same, I kind of have the same idea. So. At first, I put my personal expression on here. I tell the universe what it is that I want. Then I bring in society at large and tie them to my personal expression because we can do absolutely anything as human beings. We just can't do it alone. So whatever my expression is, whether it's a desire, whether it's something that I'm releasing, it is not always just about me. It is also about the society around me. So I entangle them we entangle them in our compositions. And then the very last one is universal consciousness, what I like to call universal consciousness, my idea of what God is. And of course, you can tie that into your personal expression as well. I don't always use all three levels of consciousness. It depends on what I am working on and how I would like to depict that energy. But uh, when I feel like I need a lot of help, they, I definitely will bring in that universal consciousness into it as well. With Neurographica, you bring in universal consciousness every single time. That's part of the algorithms they use to get compositions. So that's one of the places where I differ. For me, it is not always a must in Neurographica. It is always a must that you bring in universal consciousness, at least the way I was taught. I'm not sure if that has changed or not. Now, Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the very basic level, the very basic thing that makes neurographic art, at least the way I practice it through Neurographica, a little bit different from other arts. The thing that distinguishes neurographic art and Neurographica is the concept of the neurographic line, right? Now, the way that I was taught, a neurographic line is a organic line, meaning it's curved, that is counterintuitive, therefore it goes where it is not expected, and it never repeats itself. So for me, when I'm using neurographic lines to create my compositions, my lines are depictions of energy. They are showing fields of energy and um, lines of energy moving through this field of probabilities and possibilities. So for me, one of the things that is really important is that the quality of my lines are very smooth. Now, when I first started doing neurographic art, I wasn't very good at it, right? So 
uh, I was very used to drawing very controlled and straight lines and so my lines weren't coming out the way they, that they do now after four years of practice. So I want to teach you or show you some of the things that helped me along the way kind of understand what neurographic lines are all about. Now, I think the most uh, counterintuitive part of neurographic lines is going to be this concept of them being counterintuitive, right? And this is the part that is going to probably take you the longest to get comfortable with, this idea of drawing a counterintuitive line. Now, if you have a pen and paper handy, which I hope you don't, if you don't, pause the video right now, go grab a pen and paper and come back and replay it because I want you to try this with me. So when we talk about an intuitive line, everybody will understand what that is and let's talk about it. As soon as I put my pen on the paper, there is, and I want to, do, I create the intention in my mind of drawing a line, this line wants to go a certain direction. For me right now, the minute I put my pen down, my line wants to go here, okay? Now, for sure I'm not drawing this line because that would be an intuitive line. This is a line that has been already programmed in my, into my subconscious and I want to create resistance towards doing that which is comfortable through my subconscious mind. So I don't want to draw this line. Now. I also don't want to draw this line, right? So if this is where my pen wants to go, I'm not drawing this line. But counterintuitive also does not mean that I draw this line. <laughs> because this line is a continuation of this line, even though I'm drawing it in the opposite direction. So this is not counterintuitive. This is still an intuitive line. A counterintuitive line from this point will be to go anywhere but in that direction. Any of these lines are now counterintuitive because it is going anywhere but where this line wants to go, even if the deviation is small. Okay, so let's try a little exercise together. What I want you to do is, let me get a different. So what I want you to do now is grab your pen, grab your paper, and just feel right now where your line wants to go, where your hand naturally wants to go. Right now for me, it wants to go straight across, okay? So I'm going to resist that urge and I'm going to go anywhere but there. And then at the end, at end of that line, I'm going to leave my pen. My paper is bleeding, so I'm not going to leave it for too long, otherwise I'll have a massive blob. But I'll leave my pen there and I'll feel where it wants to go next. Right now it wants to come across. I don't want to do that and I don't want to do this one either. So I'm going to go in any direction but there. Then I'm going to wait again. And I'm going to really try to feel where it wants to go. It wants to come across and up. So I'm going to go across, but I'm not going to go up. And then I'm going to wait again. And I'm going to feel where it wants to go. Okay? And it wants to go straight up, so I'm not going to go straight up. I'm going to go anywhere but there. Again, it wants to go up, so I'm going to go anywhere but there. Okay? Try that a few times and see how you feel in your own body. For me, this creates a very, very uncomfortable feeling in my body every single time, and it creates that in my sacral region. I feel that the most, and it somehow triggers my sense of security and my root chakra when I do this, when I go against what my intuition wants me to do okay so if anything if you want to keep practicing with this and just really getting a feeling of what this feels like in your body then my suggestion is pause this video and continue doing that exercise until you really get an idea of what that feels like in your body now once 
you really get that feeling and programmed into your body what I want you to do is try to draw a line right so one of the main characteristics of a neurographic line is that it is curved right so even when I see neurographic art done with things like this people are drawing curved lines and then they are rounding the intersections okay so this is this is part of the regular nomenclature for um, neurographic art, this idea of having curved lines and not straight ones, okay? Now, when we want to draw a neurographic line, we want to draw a line that is curved for sure, So you want to draw a line that is unpredictable, kind of like life is, right? So you want to start drawing your line from one side of the paper, it doesn't really matter right now which, which way we go, but as you draw this line, every point along this line is a moment where you're trying to feel with your hand, where does this line want to go? and let me go anywhere but there. You can move forward, you can move backwards, you can move. Okay, so this would be a neurographic line. We, saw, we would like to avoid things like this where we're creating loops, so we'll talk about that later. At this point, I'm not really concerned about that. Okay, I specifically drew it because I want to show you that with a neurographic line, you can, in fact, create loops. It just, energetically speaking, especially if you're programming, it means you're putting yourself through a reset cycle. Right? This energy is going to go and twirl around itself especially if we don't dissolve it, but that's, that's for later. Okay, so at every time that we're drawing a neurographic line, you want to feel where this point wants to go and then go anywhere but there. You want these lines to be unpredictable. Now, this is not a neurographic line. 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 This line has a lot of tension. What we want in neurographic art is depiction of smooth transition of energy, even when it intersects with each other. But if you were, let's say, in a car, and this was the road you were driving on, you would have a migraine by the time you got to the end. Your brain may not even be where it originally was. It would get really, really scrambled in this process. This is not very smooth. And it is repeating itself over and over again. Right? So when we draw a neurographic line, we really want to focus on this line being unpredictable. You are really surrendering in some ways while still guiding this line along. 
Now, if the concept of surrendering, because a lot of the times when we first start is you start to think, okay, this line wants to go here. Now let me stop. Okay, now where it wants to go. And now let's go here. Now where does it want to go? It wants to go there. So let me go here. And we'll create these sharp edges to our line. That's okay. At the very beginning, this is okay. Over time, what will happen is you will start to believe in yourself enough and in your pen enough to let your pen go for a moment in a direction while you decide where it wants to go next. And then you'll start to draw more smooth lines. So perfection is not the goal here. In fact, the more random it is, the, the better it is going to be. Randomization is actually what we want because what we're creating here is a pattern interrupt. We don't want to keep repeating what we have always been taught. So we're going to let our pen move while we decide what the next direction is going to be. With intention. Now one of the ways that you can start getting comfortable with this idea of surrendering to the pen and to this process is find something round, find a coin, find I like to do this with my crystals and start just chasing that crystal around the page. At this point, it doesn't matter if it loops or not. It doesn't matter where it goes. Just what I want you to get used to is this idea of surrendering to your pen and letting it go where it wants to go. But you're still guiding it. So you're not fully giving in to your instinct. Okay. So when you're practicing with the marble, what I want you to focus on is letting go of this idea of what this line is supposed to look like. So when you get rid of the marble and you start drawing lines on your own, you're not so worried about where your line is going to go, how long it is going to stay in one direction, and letting it flow. So this exercise is not to remove you drawing neurographic lines on your own. It's not a crutch I'm giving you to get rid of resistance. We want the resistance we feel when we draw neurographic lines. So I'm not going to remove it for you by just telling you follow this marble around. Follow that around at the beginning to get used to this idea of having imperfect lines. But slowly what we want to do is we don't want to have crutches. We want to actually get to the point where we are drawing these lines with intention. Okay. Now, many times we don't end up drawing neurographic lines from one end of the paper to the other. Right? Sometimes we are in a composition like a release or a planning composition of any kind. And what we want to do is dissolve certain things. So for example, if I have a loop like this in my neurographic art, in my composition, I don't want energy to come and circle around itself here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissolve this. I'm going to take this curvature and I'm going to extend it. And I'm going to make sure I'm doing this on more than one direction because now I want this to have entrances and exits. Okay, I could even do one at the very tip. And I don't have to take my lines all the way to the edge of the paper, right? Sometimes if I have an area where that there are bigger chunks and I want to just divide these chunks up, I'll go from a nexus and I'll connect to another one. Okay, so your lines don't always have to be very, very long. Your lines can be shorter. 
okay? And they can be drawn with different purpose. But it's always the same principle. I'm always feeling where this line wants to go, and I'm resisting that, and I'm trying to go anywhere but there. Because we want to start becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay? Now, the second part of this and the therapeutic part of neurographic art is the process of rounding. And that is the part that takes the majority of your time. Okay? A lot of the time, drawing the lines actually doesn't take that much time. It's the rounding process that takes a lot longer. So, let's talk about what rounding is. If these lines that I'm drawing on this field of probabilities and possibilities is all energy, when I have an intersection of two energies going together, I want to imagine that I'm driving in a car or I'm moving at high speed on this line that the energy is moving along, okay? If I'm doing that and I come to this sharp of a corner, I cannot safely sh make this transition. Right? So what is going to end up happening instead is I'm going to have a collision, I'm going to have an accident. So in order to not do that, what we want to do is we want to create a ramp. So what I want to do is I want to create a ramp. So that no matter how much of a high speed I'm coming through, this just moves me smoothly into the next lane. Okay? And I'm doing this on all the sides possible. Okay, Now, I switched to a finer tip point pen to do this, but you don't have to. If you end up rounding with the same, same pen that I had before, just make sure that when we round like this, you don't end up creating... I'm trying to... Okay. You don't end up creating lips like that. If that happens, then you just want to make sure that you're going over your line and everything is consistent and of the same thickness, okay? Sometimes we create things like this little opening that I just created and to round that, I just want to put dots at the end of it and that rounded that. Okay, so if I come back into this page where I have all of these lines together if i want to start rounding them my favorite method of rounding isn't actually to go intersection by intersection and trying to round those intersections i do that from time to time but my favorite method for rounding is something that neurographical calls express rounding which means anytime i have a shape i round the whole thing i go around the whole thing making sure every part of that is round so I will follow this shape all the way around and make sure that all the corners of it are round and smooth. Okay. So when I do this, I ensure that all of my lines are the same thickness. If I were to go around and just round the intersections, right, and not round, not go over my lines again, in certain areas, I will end up creating more emphasis on the intersections and they will get darker and my lines will stay very thin okay you see it here these lines are very thin so if i were to just round this and leave it alone so this is the kind of rounding that neurographica teaches you to go intersection by intersection and just around every intersection, right? But you see what just happened? Especially because my pen is bleeding a little bit and I'm, to be honest, not used to using such a thick tip anymore. I do majority of my work with much finer tips. 
But if I use the express method, which is to go around every shape and make sure it's all rounded. Now all of my composition has the same thickness. And you see this is much smoother. The areas I've already rounded seem much smoother than the areas that I have not rounded. So for me, majority of the time when I'm rounding, this is the method that I'm using. I don't go intersection by intersection anymore. I just go section by section and I round that entire shape. Also, when I tell you to do it this way, it takes away a little bit of a confusion because sometimes when I tell people to round their intersections, what they end up doing is they put a circle around it. This is not what we want, okay? I'm not creating a circle and then blackening that circle. I'm actually creating, if we get into the theory a little bit, I'm actually creating a portion of four different circles. That's why this rounding process is very calming. Because at every intersection, I'm essentially drawing a circle. Right? And my brain recognizes that. The same way that if I do this, you immediately recognize what this shape is. I don't actually need to draw the lines for you to recognize them. The same thing will happen here as well. When you draw a portion of a circle, your brain recognizes the rest. And circles to our psyche are the sign of completeness, of wholeness, of tranquility of something that doesn't have a beginning or an end and therefore they are very calming for us okay so as I round my work I'm going over everything and making sure everything is smooth okay now this is the beginner level. At the very beginning levels of where you start to draw lines, you start to draw singular, singular lines. Later on, as you get a little bit more comfortable with this and in order to create some um, more intersections and more opportunities for you to round, again, and also depending on the composition that you're doing, sometimes we'll end up doing the neurographic line and I will double or triple it. What do I mean by that? So I will draw... A neurographic line and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat the same line but not exactly remember that a neurographic line never repeats itself and also what I don't want to do okay I'm gonna show you what I will do so I'm following this line but I'm not being exact about it I'm allowing for my hand to deviate from the path from time to time. I can do this a third time. I'm following the general direction of the line, but I'm not exactly following the line. Okay? 
And then when I go to round, it's the same kind of concept. I'm rounding everything together. This paper is not the best for markers. It bleeds a lot, so it's making my lines a lot thicker than I usually like them. Right? But as I round, It, it allows for a different texture to appear in this situation. Okay, so for me, it's I, I'm not always creating full compositions. Okay, I'm not always doing so. That's a release, as an example, right? But I'm not always just working on releases. Sometimes. When I'm trying to process something, I will just draw lines and I will round them together. Okay. Now, when you round, when you do this with multiple colors, there's multiple sets of rounding that needs to happen. Okay. But it doesn't always have to be with different colors. It can sometimes be of the same color and just draw lines and round them together. There's always, you get a lot of the benefit that you get from doing this art from just doing that as well, from just drawing lines and rounding them together. Right? So these are some of the examples of the work I've done with different colors, but I sometimes do the work with with a single color, okay? So this is just me drawing lines and rounding those neurographic ones. There's no composition here. This is another example, okay? So just drawing lines. That's, that's a very calming practice and also a good practice to, so again, just drawing lines and rounding them together. Okay? So that by itself can be a very successful and helpful practice to just draw lines and round them and just put some meditative music in the background and let your mind go and let your mind just focus on creating these lines and rounding these lines together, okay? So I hope that gives you a little bit of a understanding of what neurographic lines are, at least for me and the way I use them and how I practice and how rounding actually works. So. I hope you guys can spend some time and practice with this. Uh, Saturday is going to be a eclipse. The 14th of October is going to be a eclipse. And so 
I would like to do a release with you guys before we get to the eclipse on Saturday. I have ceremonies that I do on Saturday, which I will probably be sharing uh, on my TikTok account. Uh, but tomorrow, in honor of the uh, eclipse, I'm going to do a release session with you all, and we will go through this all together. Uh, or at least I'll do the release and you guys if you have any questions or if you're doing it at the same time you can but at least you watch me do a full release uh, because I haven't done that with the Dr. Payne show or you've never actually seen me do a full composition so I will show you a release tomorrow and hopefully at some point uh, the week after we will start doing some very early programming um, sessions together for you to get a sense of what this artwork all, is all about. Uh, if you want to take any of the journeys with me, there's only two of them left for this year and they start at the end of this month and beginning of November. One is a journey to self where you learn more about yourself over a six week period and the other one is journey to manifest, uh, sorry, journey to understanding which is the chakra journey. Uh, I will do a, a different version of that class on YouTube where we will just draw the different chakra symbols. So if I were to give you an idea of that looks like, I have multiple notebooks going at the same time. So the chakra series that I will do on YouTube will focus on this. It will focus on uh, creating um, the symbol of each chakra and then what it means and then the one that we are doing in class together is an exploration of that chakra of how it feels and uh, how you can program it and how we can change things within the chakra itself so it's going to be two different um, journeys focusing on the same thing so if you want to go through this which is a lot more in depth and a lot more personalized to you then let me know. But for now, I think uh, this gives you a pretty good basic understanding of how I use neurographic art um, to create my work. And if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out. Leave me comments. Um, I will look at the questions and I will answer them uh, as quickly as I can. But for now, I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable, and we will talk to you again very, very soon. Have a blessed day, everybody.